Let's recall our main result from last time. We have f a subfield of k. We'll say that alpha and k is algebraic over f if one of the following two equivalent conditions hold. First, alpha is the root of some non-zero polynomial of coefficients in f, or the degree of the subfield generated by f and alpha over f is finite. So we have a finite dimensional vector space over f. With our second condition, we can think of the property of algebraic as being a measure of size. Here, size in terms of dimension. So, I would think of f and f adjoint alpha as being close when alpha is algebraic. For example, if I take the rationals of joint square root of 2, the degree over the rationals is equal to 2. But if I took the field generated by the rationals in pi, the degree over the rationals is infinite, because pi is transcendental. So the difference here is, when we adjoin a transcendental, we're getting behavior like a function field. We'll say more about this in a little bit. For now, let's return to the notion of size. So we have size in terms of dimension. How about the original measure of size, cardinality? So let's focus on complex numbers. Inside the complex numbers, we have the algebraic numbers. These are the complex numbers that are algebraic over the rationals. So we'll denote these by q bar. Let's consider the algebraic numbers that are also real. If we go back to basic cardinality, okay, we have that the rationals are countable. So the complement, the irrationals, will be uncountable in the reals. Now, question we can ask, how much control can we get over the irrationals by using field extensions. So with our first approximation, we see not very far. So proposition, if we take the algebraic numbers, okay, in the reals, that set is going to be countable. We'll show that on the next board, but the first consequence is, okay, if we take the transcendentals in the reals, the complement of this set, that's going to be uncountable. So we haven't gotten much control by going to the algebraic numbers. See that q bar is countable, we proceed in several steps. First, we want to write q bar as a countable union of finite sets. Then q bar is countable. Here, the indexing set is all polynomials with rational coefficients. To each polynomial, we assign the finite set of all roots of that polynomial in the complex numbers. That means I need to show that the polynomials with rational coefficients are countable. To see that, we write q adjoint x as a countable union of countable sets, and then it itself is countable. For that, we're going to define for each non-negative integer n, p of n is going to be the subset of all polynomials with rational coefficients with degree less than or equal to n. So we show that each of these are countable. Now, any element in here is going to look like c0 plus c1x, all the way up through cn, x to the n. The c's are going to be in the rationals, so this set is really just a finite product of rationals. Because we have a finite product of countable sets, that itself is going to be countable, and that's the result that we're looking for. So q bar is countable. Now note, there's nothing special about the rationals here. What we've just shown is, if f is countable, then the subfield in K of algebraic elements over F is also countable. Now, getting back to the irrationals, well, if we take the algebraic numbers, we're not going to get control of the irrationals using fields. So the next thing to consider is to take the algebraic numbers and adjoin a transcendental, say pi. We work in general. So if f is a countable subfield of k, alpha is a transcendental over f, then the subfield generated by f and alpha is field isomorphic to the rational functions over f. So let's show that the rational functions are countable. Now, every rational function can be written as a polynomial over a polynomial. So I have a map going from okay, f adjoint x cross f adjoint x throw away 0. So it's going to send each pair to its ratio. Now, this map is onto, but it's not one-to-one. -one. That's not a problem. We note we've seen 
that each of these sets is countable. So the product is countable. And I have an onto map from a countable set. So the image is also countable. That means the subfield is also countable. Now, if we track out what we've been doing, okay, we start with the rationals, which are countable. Go to the algebraic numbers, these are also countable. I take pi, a transcendental. Okay, we take the subfield generated by the algebraic numbers in pi. This is also countable. I could take all complex numbers that are algebraic over this field, still countable. And we keep repeating this process finitely many times. We still wind up with a subfield of the complex numbers that's countable. Okay, note in here, result we're using for next time, pi is transcendental over the rationals, then pi is transcendental over the algebraic numbers. So we note with this process, we're not going to get a good feel for the transcendentals. Now, how do we make transcendentals? So here we're just going to give an overview of the theory. First big result, we have Hermit Lindemann. So this says, if we take algebraic number alpha, which is non-zero, then e to the alpha is transcendental. So from this we get, okay, well, e will be transcendental. Okay, with some work, you can show that pi is transcendental using this. And we have log of alpha. Okay, whenever this is non-zero, it'll be transcendental when alpha is algebraic. The next big result on transcendentals is Gelfand Schneider. Here, if alpha and beta are algebraic, alpha is not equal to zero or one, and beta is irrational, then alpha to the beta is transcendental. Okay, this is Hilbert's seventh problem. For examples, we have two to the square root of two and e to the pi. Now, e to the pi is a transcendental to a transcendental, so I can rewrite this as e to the i pi to the minus i. This is minus one to the minus i, and Gelfand Schneider applies, so transcendental. Now, for other directions, okay, one way to go, we can look at the Riemann zeta function. If we apply zeta to twice a positive integer, it's known this is a rational times an even power of pi. So that's always going to be transcendental. On the other hand, not much is known when we apply zeta to an odd positive integer. So here a big result is zeta applied to 3 is irrational. Okay, still don't know if it's transcendental. For another direction, okay, we start with the definition. We'll have complex numbers, alpha 1 through alpha n. Call these algebraically independent over the rationals. If there's no non-zero polynomial over the rationals, okay, and n variables, such that p applied to alpha 1 through alpha n is 0. So when n is equal to 1, this is a special case of transcendental. Big result here, Nestorenko. We have that pi and e to the pi are algebraically independent over q, among other results. Now, a natural question to ask, how about e and pi? Are they algebraically independent? So, still not known whether pi plus e is irrational or not, which would be the first step.